Good morning, India. I am Shalini Kumar, bringing the latest updates to you on news this week. Sweeping changes are expected in next round of auctions for liquor shops, including licenses for 200 more stores in Telangana. Auctions for the next two years will be held in October this year and the excise department is currently working on a new policy. The excise department intends to develop a new policy by the end of next month. More than 80 new bars were permitted after the formation of the state but none of them opened for various reasons. Also, a number of licenses for liquor shops have remained constant since the state's inception. Officials are proposing a change this time by adding licenses for 200 more stores. Another change being considered is an increase in the application fee for participating in auctions. Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao declaring that empowerment of Dalits through Telangana Dalit Bandhu was only the first step towards eradication of economic and social inequalities in the country. He also announced several more initiatives including special reservation for Dalits in government licenses required to run certain businesses. International Spirits and Wines Association of India has started efforts to initiate a discussion with Andhra Pradesh government on sustainable and best practices related to the liquor business and revenue generation. For this, SY is forming a team of experts to carry out a discussion with Andhra government to create a conducive environment for ease of doing liquor business. Recently, Andhra government has announced opening 300 new liquor stores at tourist locations in the state. Apart from Andhra, SY is planning to do such engagements on the liquor business with other states including Telangana in near future. Dashing all hopes of home delivery of liquor in Uttar Pradesh, the Allahabad High Court has dismissed a PIL seeking framing of policy to permit online sale of liquor and its home delivery in the state. Division Bench observed that finding the subject matter as the policy of the state, the bench is not inclined to allow online sale of liquor. The chief standing counsel representing the state government opposed the petition and submitted that presently the government is not inclined to allow online sale of the liquor with home delivery. On the other hand, the West Bengal government has shown a much progressive attitude and has invited expressions of interest from more online players for home delivery of liquor in the state. Home delivery of liquor service in the state was introduced for the first time in 2020. Swiggy, Spencers and Big Basket have marked presence in the home delivery of liquor domains in Kolkata and suburbs. However, some other players including Zomato and Hip Bar have stopped operations of home delivery of liquor in West Bengal since the last few months. The Federation of Hotel and Restaurant Associations of India has written to the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman and sought her intervention to notify the 60,000 crore rupees sanctioned under the Loan Guarantee Scheme for COVID-19 affected sectors. In its letter, FHRAI underlines the amount has still not been released a month after the government made the announcement on 28th June this year and expressed disappointment that over a month has passed since announcing the scheme but it has not yet been notified by the finance ministry. If you are in Kerala and want to buy liquor from any retail store, you need to have a negative RT-PCR report. The Kerala government has made a negative RT-PCR test report mandatory for queuing outside bars or Bevco outlets to buy alcohol as the state's COVID-19 test positivity rate is running high. Now moving on to some news about the expansion plans of a company. India Glycol Limited is 
going to set up, install and commission grain based distillery units with a capacity of 180 KLPD and 110 KLPD at its Kashipur and Gorakhpur sites. An estimated total capital expenditure of approximately 304 crore rupees would be incurred on the project. The grain distillation capacities at Gorakhpur and Kashipur are expected to be commissioned by 31st March 2022. Here is the news worth celebrating a huge success of a brand. Seagram's 100 Pipers has become the first and only scotch brand in India to cross the 1 million plus cases mark in annual sales. Adding to this success streak, the brand's premium variant 100 Pipers blended scotch aged 12 years crossed 1 million cases in annual sales for the first time ever since its launch in 2012 and is now the largest selling 12 year old scotch in India. Adding to this success streak, the brand's premium variant 100 Pipers blended scotch aged 12 years is now the largest selling 12 year old scotch in India. Beam Santori has reported results for the first half of 2021, reflecting a stronger than expected rebound in key markets and excellent performance for its premium brands. Net sales increased by 12% for the maker of Jim Beam and Maker's Mark Bourbon, Korovisor Cognac and Hibiki Japanese Whiskey as the company benefited from double digit sales gains in markets including that of the United States, Canada, EMEA, Oceania, India, China, Emerging Asia and Global Travel Retail. In the first half of 2021, sales of Beam Santori brands were 8% above that of the first half of 2019, the comparable pre-pandemic period. Let's see which new brands are making news this week. PepsiCo and Boston Beer are coming together to create an alcoholic version of Mountain Dew drink. Boston Beer will develop and produce the drink called Hard Mountain Dew, while PepsiCo will be responsible for selling, delivering and merchandising the Hard Mountain Dew. The product is expected to hit the market in early 2022. New Aperitif Sulasa, an aperitif designed specifically to serve the Indian dishes, has made its debut in the United Kingdom. Sulasa is a creation of two Indians Vishal and Sajak Patel with the help of chefs, mixologists and food scientists. The name Sulasa is inspired by the Mansol Lasa, a 12th century Sanskrit text thought to be one of the first Indian recipe books. With 20% ABV, this grain based spirit is made with orange zest, lime, lychee, mint, basil, coriander seeds, cardamom and sea salt with the aim of authentically complementing Indian food. Young Goa-based entrepreneur Adriel Sequera has introduced India's first cashew-infused gin named Sequer. Adriel Sequera quests to experiment with ingredients available locally. Adriel Sequera comes from the Sequera family who owns Goa's Spirit de Goa distillery. The newly launched gin gets its name from his family name Sequera. As we all love to know about what is new happening in the hospitality sector, here is a heartwarming story for you. One Eight Commune, a resto bar is opened by Virat Kohli in Kolkata earlier this month. Located in the heart of the city at Golden Park, the place upholds a thoughtful blend of the old world charm with the contemporary. The signature resto bar spreads over an area of 4,500 square feet plus and has a seating capacity of 100 covers that includes capsule style pods and raised VIP seating space with the backdrop of an LED lit signature of Virat Kohli. This was your news update for this week. For detailed news, please visit our website www.spirits.in. Keep watching News This Week on Spirits TV. We will meet again next week, same day, same time. Till then, stay safe.
गुड बाय